super encouraging. Um, but we want, I did want, and one of my favorite studies to study out, and I'm sure as many people, is the cost study. Yeah. And this is, I feel like this is the fun part, you know. Yeah. We, we've done all the hard work of digging and, and praying and fasting. And, um, so, I mean, this study is not the study, as I mentioned, to convict. Right. You know, they're already convicted. And, and I think a good way to look at it is even when The Passion came out with Mel Gibson's movie The Passion. You know, uh, when it came out, at the end of it, so many people were talking about it. I thought, oh my gosh, so many people are talking about Jesus all around our country right now. It's so amazing. Let's wait and see what happens. And they, they did these studies after that after that movie came out, and they asked people, like, what? how is this going to affect your life? Mm-hmm. And then they followed up one year later. Mm-hmm. And if you guess, how many people actually had the passion make an effect in their life? If you had to guess, what would you think? If you already know the yeah, answer, you know. Three percent? Yeah. Three <laughs> percent? Less than three percent. Less than three percent. Wow. Keep going. One percent. Less than one percent. Wow. It was one quarter of one percent. Wow. And, but I think the reason why, we know why, because they didn't go into it with con- you know, conviction. They didn't go in with the right heart. And I think we've got to make sure. There's been many, many times I, I set up the study of cross studying and I come in and start talking, you realize they're not ready. Mm-hmm. And especially with teens, they get so upset. They're like, I'm getting to do the study cross study. They told all their friends, and we realize, no, I didn't study at the cross. And, um, but we've got to be ready to do that. We really want this to be given to the heart that is ready, that they're right. convicted. Yeah. They just want to. They, they just want to know how to have this relationship with God now because they're coming in with a sense of need. There is a, some special circumstances though. Um, when I've turned it around, um, and those are certain circumstances circumstances where people just have such a hard time even opening up because of real victim issues like mm-hmm. abuse and those times sometimes I will actually start I, will, I won't do a full-fledged cross because it won't make that much sense to them their need and sense of atonement um, but it gives them like Jesus is the real victim yeah. and, mm-hmm. and he forgives in the midst of abuse mm-hmm. um, but uh, you know that's you so there are I mean obviously I, just to be open with everybody, I didn't even do the cross, the first cross study I ever had was the one I led after I was baptized. <laughs> so, because I started wow. out sin, repentance, and baptism, and then got baptized. Mm-hmm. And then someone on my baptism said, here is the medical account, you should read this. And I thought, okay, I'll do that. <laughs> but, but I do think, it, I love this study, though, because yeah. it is such great news. And I think as ministers, yeah. we really do have to have a good handle on the whole idea of atonement. You know, even that, you know, at atonement literally means at one. Spell it out. At, it means yeah. at one. And meant, you know, is after the Latin word, um, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right. If, you're, if you know Latin, you can correct me. Adonamentum. Um, but atonement is at one in perfect unity. Mm-hmm. Atonement. And this whole idea of atonement, we got to realize, I, I think this is why I love the cross study so much, is it just the whole, um, the concept of what happened at the cross brings together so many characteristics of who God is, mm-hmm. you know, all in one experience of the cross. Mm-hmm. And, and I think as you read through the Old Testament, you get this idea of atonement. You know, it's interesting, you know, there, there are certain, you know, atonement, you can study this out, but atonement was needed for even in, inanimate objects like the mildew on the house and things like that. But when it, caught, when it started talking about atonement with relation to sacrifice, it was always for people's sins. And, and I think that idea of this perfect harmony that we can have with this perfect and pure God needs atonement. Mm-hmm. You know, very closely um, the same concept of reconciliation. Uh, but this atonement, I think having a good idea, like sometimes, I don't do this very often, but sometimes <laughs> studying with somebody who is perhaps more agnostic or doesn't have, which is more rare in our country, especially mm-hmm. in Virginia, um, but... Uh, but occasionally I do study the Bible with somebody that really doesn't understand their, I mean, they've studied out sin and they're feeling convicted, but yet they don't understand, well, why, why would God, you know, why, 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 why do we need this? Why, why blood? Why atonement? Why this way? And, um, I, I will show that this is something that's not new to the new covenant, that it has been ever since. I will take them back. Like Leviticus 16 is a great passage where you see so much, it's the day of atonement. And you can see how it is, God is sovereign. And that's a great characteristic of God, God's sovereignty, even to the point of telling Aaron exactly what clothes he needed to wear. You know, why was that so important? Because God is king, and he does it his way. He is sovereign. Um, you know, the, the, the two goats, the scapegoat, you know, and the representing, you know, that 
even even when they're choosing the scapegoat, the fact that we don't even choose which goat gets to go, that they throw lots because God is the one who has to choose and not us. Wow. You know, it's all about God and, and us in need and bringing them back through that. And, 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 you know, the burning up of the one goat, you know, that our sins are completely gone, 100%. And then the goat that's sent out, you know, and... and, and um, that our sins are gone as far as the east yeah. from the west. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the completion, you, you read out, you know, you go to Leviticus 16 through 18, you get the whole story, and uh, it, is, it is comprehensive sin. Because mm-hmm. all through Leviticus, you start reading about all this, you've unintentionally sinned, you've unintentionally yeah. sinned, you've unintentionally mm-hmm. That gives, if anything gives you the fear of God, that mm-hmm. should. <laughs> because yeah. I'm like, well, what, where, where, what about the intentional sins? Because I did yeah. a lot of this. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. um, but then, it, that does come out then. Yeah. And you know, it says all of, even the healing crimes of idolatry mm-hmm. will be forgiven. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, the ones that were done on purpose, mm-hmm. you know, with knowledge of God. Mm-hmm. And and I thought, whew, you know, God's wrath, <coughs> God's mercy, his sovereignty, his purpose. And then even more so when Aaron, who even as the priest, the, the top of the priest, and how he, and Hebrews does a great job, Hebrews 8 and 9 does a great mm-hmm. job showing that even Aaron at the top, Mm-hmm. Needed his sins forgiven before he could help others be, right. you know, get atonement for their sins. Mm-hmm. And I think that whole idea of like it's we're all in the same boat, yeah. you yeah. know. And then that whole idea of death being related to atonement, mm-hmm. you know. So I do, you know, I I don't do that a lot, but we need to be ready to do that if yeah. we need yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But something that I do do uh, often with the cross, I'll start out with John one twenty nine, you yeah. know, where John the Baptist says, you know, look, the Lamb of God. And I'll ask somebody, why a lamb? I mean, Jesus is king. He is mm-hmm. our savior. Why a lamb? Um, and if somebody is, is <coughs> somewhat biblically um, knowledgeable, that they, they remember that the lambs were sacrificed. Mm-hmm. And, and that's all we do at that point. But if they're like, I have no idea. Why lamb? I said, well, how do you think they got their sins forgiven in the old covenant? Mm-hmm. You know, and then I'll bring them back to like a place in like Leviticus 4 is one mm-hmm. that I'll use where it talks about... Um, you know, the, the, and I like Leviticus 4 too, because not the beginning, but towards the end of Leviticus 4, when it talks about the common man getting his sins forgiven. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't just for the community, it wasn't just, we're, we're studying with an individual at this point. Mm-hmm. And um, Leviticus 4, I think it's like 32, 33, when he says, when, if someone brings a lamb as their sin offering, they are, they are to bring a female without defect. They are to lay their hand on its head and slaughter it for a sin offering at the place where the burnt offering is. <coughs> And just imagine now Jesus is becoming that personal, um, that personal slaughter for our sins, you know, after we've talked through it. And I, I know a lot of people, and I think there's times, like, sometimes I, it's good to change up the cross even for our own hearts sometimes. Um, but my husband does a lot where he'll study through the, the book of Romans, and that's the cross study. And it's such a great study. You start out with Romans 1, men are without excuse. God will actually yeah. hand you over. To your depraved mindset, mm-hmm. unless you get this, yeah, you know, and then even the same concept in Romans too. You know, it's God's kindness meant to lead us repentance, but wait, mm-hmm. because of your stubborn, unrepentant heart, hearts, wrath is coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, um, and then you keep going, and in Romans three, you know, they're they're, you know, we've all fallen short, mm-hmm. but right. through the shedding of His blood, this mm-hmm. whole concept of blood, and it's mm-hmm. such an important thing to understand. At the level of the cross, because we so much of our, we want to take credit. It's my righteousness because now I'm doing good things, or now I've confessed. Right. And like, no, 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 none of that can save you. Not even your faith can yeah. save you. I mean, yeah. remind people, we're saved through faith, but it's the blood of Jesus that saves us. Right. You know, and it's through the shedding of blood. It says yeah. in Romans uh, three twenty four, um, and then going into uh, um, this Romans four concept, and this is something that we. I mean, it's probably teasing it apart, but it is something theological. Again, for ministers, I don't do this in my Bible studies. But in Romans 4, when it talks about the words, um, it was credited to him, talking about um, the faith, was, but, but also for us to whom God will credit righteousness. Yeah. And I think I learned justification. And, and someone gave me this, this thing, it wasn't correct theologically, just as if I've never sinned. Yeah. Well, that's actually forgiveness of sins. Justification, I think of it more as righteousification. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, we're credited the righteousness of Jesus. Mm-hmm. I mean, the atonement that we get through the blood of Jesus, not that forgives our sins, but we're also credited his righteousness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's his righteousness. We get our sins forgiven, that doesn't make us holy and pure. It's mm-hmm. Jesus' righteousness. Not mm-hmm. our own, so that nobody can boast, you know, Ephesians 2. Mm-hmm. But, but, 
understanding that, that this atonement, this reconciliation is forgiveness of sins and justification. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is mind-boggling that we get credited. Jesus, think how perfect Jesus was. Right. You get that when you get when you repent and get baptized, you get credited Jesus' righteousness. Wow. Yeah. Not wow. only your sins forgiven and avoiding God's wrath, but then to be justified too. Mm -hmm. This is mind-boggling, this yeah. cross. Um, but, you know, I'll often, um, you know, after we talk about the lamb and the sacrifice and see where they're at, you know, asking them questions of what they do understand and why this had to happen, finding out where they're at, um, and, and then going from there and then talking. But once we're to the point where I feel like, okay, they, get, they see they're convicted, they see their need, they understand that Jesus is, is that way, I also make sure that they, I, I don't feel great about studying out the crucifixion until somebody has read through a gospel re fairly recently. You know, because we're studying the, the culmination of yeah. Jesus here on earth. Right, right. Um, that I, you know, if they say, yeah, I've been going over the scriptures you've been giving me. I said, well, have you, have you read through a gospel recently? And like, well, maybe when I was in church, like, I thought, well, what if we stop? I'll do something different, you know, at that point. Because I, I really like for them to have gotten through, um, gotten through a, um, a gospel. Mm -hmm. um, but when we, and then you can, it doesn't matter which God, I've done Matthew, Mark, I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm sure you've all done different things at different times. Uh, but I'll start off in, in the Garden of Gethsemane. And, um, and, the, and the reason why I do that, for several reasons, but I think something that, that is mind-boggling that we can't even fathom is this idea of our Savior, our perfect Savior there lying, as it says in Luke, face down on the ground, crying out, begging his daddy. You know, but yet then you've got our, our patristic fathers who boldly went in like with their like, sure, kill me. Watch me, you know. Um, you have Polycarp, the, the disciple of John, um, who, who goes in and, and uh, preaches on one who's being burned to death. You know, Andrew, you know, this is all church history stuff uh, with the patristics. But, but they, they weren't weeping on the ground with their face down on the ground begging for it not to happen. Mm -hmm. so, so what's different? Mm -hmm. You know, and the thing, the thing that we don't take into account is how evil sin is. Wow. And that's something that Jesus, that to be defiled by my sin, mm. oh, wow. to be defiled, to take that in. Mm. No, if there's any other way. We just don't get because we're sinners. We're so desensitized to sin. And the cross study should help us get resensitized to the intensity of sin. It's, it's, a, it's the two, in my mind, I think the two things we need to accomplish, well, there's more than two things, because you're studying the cross the rest of your life. Sure. <laughs> but, yeah. but the intensity of sin and the uncomprehensible love that God has for us. Yeah. You know, um, it is that fear of God, you know, as the Second Corinthians, I often actually end in Second Corinthians 5 in the cross study of, since we know what is the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade men. But I'm propelled by Christ's love. Mm -hmm. And it's the cross mm -hmm. that motivates Paul to do all the amazing things he does. Mm -hmm. And that's my cross study. Is let, I want to get someone to this heart that Paul has in 2 Corinthians 5. But as I go through Jesus and we talk about that, we talk about, remind him of Isaiah 59, which you perhaps went over in Isaiah uh, when he did the sin study. You know, about sin separating us so that God you know, um, cannot even hear or see us and and you probably, I mean, someone, I was actually, uh, when I was studying the Bible with people, that was something that always just mind-boggled me, this idea of how can my sin separate me from God, you know, um, when, when he's omniscient and omnipresent, and, you know, I don't, I don't understand that concept, and I remember Vicki Jacoby giving me this scenario, and I'm sure a lot of you probably use this story, and I, this is a story that I use often, because um, it helps me understand the defilement of sin as well, is is, you know, a sense of, and I, I, I use animals because I think that's, uh, you know, somebody's pet, open the door, their pet is, their favorite pet is running across the street, and what do we do, and there's a car coming, you can't stop it from happening, in the moment of an impact, what happens, what do you do, you know, and I'm like, I don't, I don't know, I, I, I try to stop it, well, it's too late, it's in the moment of the impact, what do you do, you know, and you scream, you hold your eyes, you do this, ah, right. why, why do you do that? Because it's too horrible. Yeah. And that's what our sin is to God. How can he, it's not that I can't hear and not see, but I'm not going to be like, what's happening? Let me see what's happening. We know it's coming. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. Can't, no. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. That sin separates us from God because he is a perfect and holy God and can't have nothing. He can't have anything to do with sin because it is so mm -hmm. evil. That proud thought, that bitter envy, 
Yeah. Evil. You've got to get this, you know, with Jesus. You know, when he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane with his face on the ground, you know, sweat like drops of blood, you mm -hmm. know, begging for three hours, you know. It says he prayed for an hour and then he prayed the same thing for two more times, you know, begging, Daddy, take this cup from me. You know, but that whole concept of was it, was the defilement of sin in his body on a tree, as it says in 1 Peter chapter 2. Mm -hmm. um, when he says, take this cup from me, take mm -hmm. this cup. How often at this point, you know, depending on which way, if I'm doing more of a doctrinal study and through Romans, uh, but often, I do this more so, and, and I do this, and I think women, we, we so much connect to relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, so I, I focus a lot on the relationship of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the perfect one relationship, mm -hmm. the only perfect one relationship. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I take them back, well, what is the cup? Because, you know, in reading, reading a Jewish document, this is a Jewish document, <laughs> you know, from Abraham on, um, <coughs> Israel's created, who well, would have been with Jacob. But, um, so... The cup would have been something very specific. In the Old right. Testament, it was a cup of wrath, and it was a cup of blessing. And I know a lot of you have done this. Um, we've seen each other do this. But I do take them back to Isaiah 51. Why don't you guys turn there Come on, Dad. Um, and see, well, let's look at a cup. He's clearly not talking about take this cup of blessing from me. Mm -hmm. And I'll read, you know, Isaiah 51, 17, um, 17 through 21. <clears throat> I'll just start reading it, turning here. It says, Awake, awake, rise up, O Jerusalem. Um, even before I start reading this, I, I, I remind them that we've got to, when we're reading the Bible, that we've got to understand what we're reading. And right now we're reading metaphors, it's poetry. But God is trying to get truth to your heart through, through this prophet mm -hmm. and through his words um, so that they can be in the right frame of mind when they're starting to read here because we're starting in the middle of something. But wake, awake, rise up, O Jerusalem. You have drunk from the hand of the Lord the cup of his wrath. You have drained to its dregs the goblet that makes men stagger. Of all the sons she bore, there is none to guide her. Of all the sons she reared, there is none to take her by the hand. These double calamities have come upon you. Who can comfort you? Ruin and destruction, famine and sword. Who can console you? Your sons have fainted. They lie at the head of every street like antelope caught in a net. They are filled with the wrath of the Lord and the rebuke of your God. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so important for us to understand our culture is very grace-oriented. God, yeah. forgive me, I just ask him. Mm -hmm. But they don't understand the fear of God. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think we do a great job of always teaching people about the fear mm -hmm. of the God. Even in Deuteronomy, they like, teach it. Teach. Everybody has to be taught the fear of the Lord. That's the mm -hmm. beginning of wisdom. We sometimes skip that, even with our kids. Mm -hmm. You know, We think, oh, let me teach you about how much God loves you. Well, you don't understand how much God loves you until you understand that you need to fear him first. Mm -hmm. right. And um, But I think this idea of God's wrath and when we, when we look at the, even in modern psychology, the 10 top causes of stress in life, you know, um, I don't always go over some of my study, I mentioned the ones that, that are in here, but just for you, physical illness, tensions at work within the family, divorce, death in the family, moving, jail term, marriage, debt, unemployment, major life changes, and then they talk about stress not being rooted at all in external issues, but they can also be self-created by lack of ability to accept uncertainty. Negativity, impractical perfectionism, expectations, low self-esteem, and loneliness. These are the things that psychologists found out are the most damaging to us, the most painful and damaging. And but when you read this list of things, I mean, it's this woman who's completely shamed. You know, I'm studying the Bible with a woman right now who she she has identified her fear as I'm afraid of being humiliated. Uh, she has a, a mental illness, and she feels like she's humiliated over and over again. She's like, I hate, I just don't, I don't, I don't like it. You know, we're talking about I'm trying to help her to embrace pain, embrace the suffering. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that this is a part of Jesus who was humiliated for us, that you, you get to understand him even more as you go towards it. But here, the wrath of God is described as this woman who's being humiliated. Of all these sons she's born, there's none to guide her. Her family, her children. Obviously, this is a metaphor mm -hmm. that towards come, wrath coming towards Jerusalem. But the, the things that we can learn just about God, that mm -hmm. he is a God of wrath. Mm -hmm. You know? And, and as you study out the fear of the Lord, is that we need the fear of the Lord. It protects yeah. us. Mm -hmm. It 
will get us on the narrow path to get us to him, which is what he ultimately wants. Mm -hmm. But if it wasn't real, it's not powerful enough to get us on the narrow path. We've got to understand that the wrath yeah. of God really is real, and it's, it's so helpful, you know, to get us to where he wants us to be with him. You know, in the end, when it talks about who will console you, again, this loneliness, you know, and, and at the end, you know, when it talks about your sons have fainted, they lie on <coughs> every street like an antelope caught in a net. You know, as I'm studying with moms, and, you know, we talk about, like, have you ever seen your child suffer? How, how painful it is to see and watch a child suffer. You know, there is not a mom in the world that wouldn't take place. Like, I would rather be the one suffering than my child right now. If there's anything in our power we could do, but that's how painful God's wrath. You know, when you take all, again, it's all metaphor. It's all, like, God is trying to get us to understand this is real. I think, what is hell? I think that's God's wrath for a very long time. Oh, yeah. You know, wake up. You know? And then, and then after we, you know, we understand that this is what our sins deserve because they're that evil. We, we're desensitized, so we don't get that. Mm -hmm. But God is trying to teach us to reorient us to truth. That, God, that sins really are that evil. And then I'll often go over to Isaiah 54. And I love this. Switch over to Isaiah 54. Amen. And it says, and I love this part. It says, sing, O barren woman, you who never bore a child, burst into song, shout, into joy, shout for joy, you who have never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. Now remember, in the Jewish culture, infertility, it, as hard as it is now, I appreciate you guys sharing this yeah. morning about how intensely challenging emotionally it is when you're dealing with infertility. But back then, way more. Yeah. Yeah. Way more. You were considered cursed by God mm -hmm. if you were infertile. Yeah, you right. know, but here it is like, okay, this, and then it goes on. Mm -hmm. This is a large place of tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not pull back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stake, for you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess uh, uh, nations and settle in their desolate cities. Do not be afraid. You will not suffer shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. For your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. He is called the God of all the earth. The Lord will call you back as if you were a wife, deserted and distressed in spirit, a wife who married young, only to be rejected, says your God. For a brief moment I abandoned you, but with deep compassion I will bring you back. In a surge of anger, I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, put me in Isaiah 54, please. <laughs> you know, but even for them, even the whole idea of the tent curtains, understanding this is an agricultural town. Land meant more than everything. <laughs> yes, and land meant posterity. It meant success. I mean, God has blessed you. You know, so infertility and, and land... And, and not fearing humiliation, which is something of all times and transcultural, but to understand God is trying to be like, this is reconciliation. Mm -hmm. So we've got wrath coming down on Israel, and then we've got reconciliation here, and I often ask, what comes in between? What comes in between? The cross. The cross, absolutely. And then I take them back. Awful, a lot of times I'm like, well, they repent, which of course, that's how we connect to the cross. You know, but where does God's wrath go? And we miss that step. God's wrath. You know, and then I take them back to Isaiah 52 and we read about the suffering servant in Acts 50, I mean, in, in Isaiah 52, starting in verse 13. See, my servant will act wisely. He will be raised and lifted up and highly exalted, just as there were many who were appalled by him. His appearance, you know, appearance here is the. Um, Hebrew word for face. His face was so disfigured beyond that of any man, and his form, and his body, marred beyond human likeness. You know, even in the Passion, they, just to keep his whole humanity, he still looked like a human being. But in reality, he didn't even look like a human being. Oh, wow. um, when, they, when I had a nurse ask me, do you think it was really that bad? And I have to tell them truthfully, from the scriptures, it was worse. So he will sprinkle many nations, and kings will shut their mouths because of him, for they were not told, they will see, and what they have not heard, they will understand. Who has believed our message? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like him, before him, like a tender shoot, and like a root at a dry ground. He has no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows, and familiar with suffering, like one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. 
Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Mm -hmm. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Mm -hmm. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, mm -hmm. and as a sheep before her shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he has, had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, we will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death, and was numbered with the transgressors, for he bore the sin of men, and made intercession for the transgressors. Mm -hmm. You know, so much at this point, and we talk, and we just... For a moment, you know, just, what do you say? Yeah. Where does God's wrath go? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It went on Jesus as your substitute, mm -hmm. bearing our sins. You know, a lot of times I will switch over to First uh, Peter at this point and show he bore mm -hmm. our sins, quoting the scripture on Jesus, you know? And especially somebody who's struggled with a lot of deceit. We talk about these things at this moment. Mm -hmm. and, and with moms, and, and even with that moms, it's like, it was the Lord's will. It was... The Father in heaven, you know, that the wrath that he described about his sons, you know, caught in a net like an antelope, mm. his own wrath on his own son, mm. you know. I asked moms, I'm like, who would you, like, if you knew, um, if you knew that if your son was tortured mm. to death, if you knew that that torture would get somebody that you love into heaven for sure. And your son, your child, daughter would make it to heaven, be with be with them, but so would this other person. Who would you do that for? And in my pride, sometimes I thought, well, maybe I could do it for my dad. And I thought, honestly, if I start hearing my son yelling, mommy, mommy, not this way, not this way, I can't, I'll do it if you want me to, but I can't, I can't, mommy. And I'll be like, let him find another way. Yeah. If I'm honest with myself, yeah. you know? Yeah. But I don't even love anybody that much, but yet God loves us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, do we understand the intensity of God's love? Just as his wrath is beyond comprehension, his love is even more compre incomprehensible. I mean, we've got to bring this with the cross. This is the thing that drives us. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got to understand that, That I mean, I remember even as a young Christian, it was the cross that helped me, like, I, I thought, gosh, I'm, I'm sinning so much. And I'm like, messy. you get baptized, and all of a sudden you realize with the indwelling Holy Spirit, like, I sin a lot more than I thought of before. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, that means you're saved, and God is now fighting with you to make you more holy and exposing your sin. But I remember thinking, how could God love me? You know, I thought, I am never going to have that thought again because I am not going to minimalize the message of the cross. Wow. I am not going to demean what God has done on the cross I mean, I don't have to understand it completely. I never will because I don't love like this. Yeah. I will try and I will fight to love like this with everything I've got, you know. But I will never lessen the message of the cross by doubting his love for me. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and we've got to help people at that mm -hmm. seat, in that seat. Like, do you understand? Who would walk away? And I, I often say, like, if people just understood how much God loved them, what he was willing to do to get them to be with him forever, they would never walk away. Wow. Yeah. They just got that. Mm -hmm. We talk about that. People don't know this. Yeah. They don't get it. They don't understand you know, we don't understand because it's incomprehensible to our puny yeah. human brains. Yeah. But we've got to fight to get. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, and this, this love story, this amazing love story, even the fact that his wrath and even the fact that God created hell was part of the love story. Mm. Wow. Because that would put us on the right path mm. so that we could get to him and find our one real true love. Mm. You know, and, and this is... This is the cross that we want to get across, mm -hmm. you know, and then, and then I'll go back. I'll go back to my, 
Um, sometimes I don't. Sometimes we don't have time. I just go straight to 2 Corinthians 5 in here and talk about since we know what is the fear of the Lord. Yeah. You know, I'm convinced. I'm compelled by Christ's love because I'm convinced that one died for all, therefore all died. Now, we no longer regard anyone from a worldly point of view. Right. That's repentance. Yeah. Worldly point of view. It's your world perspective. Mm. Everybody is a soul now. How many people get this? How many get, mm. people get godly sorrow? You can't get godly sorrow unless you understand the intensity of your sin. Yeah. Mm. You know, when I study out sin, I'm like, I get it. I'm lost. It's not complicated, mm -hmm. you know, but I think we, we can learn to help people get there on their journey and help them stay faithful mm -hmm. and help them mature as Christians even with the cross. I often sometimes go back when somebody's been stuck. I'll go back to the cross. Mm -hmm. I've done that many, many times. I'm like, do you remember? Mm -hmm. Do you want to be in Isaiah 51? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to be in Isaiah 54? Come on. Mm -hmm. You know, that's yeah. just the beginning because then oh, yeah. I got to get them back to being compelled by Christ. Yeah. You know, and that's that Second Corinthians 5 of like being compelled by Christ and love. You understand how much he loves you. Mm -hmm. You can't understand how much you love how much he loves you until you understand that his wrath that Jesus took on God's wrath on the cross out of love. Mm -hmm. It's not separate. Like let me do the fear of the Lord, let me do the Lord. No, they're completely intertwined. Mm -hmm. And 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 the cross brings that all together. Mm -hmm. You know, the sovereignty of God of, of making it happen exactly the way you want to do. The wrath of God, the intensity of sin, his love, his grace, his mercy, his compassion, all these characteristics of God right here in front of them in this message. You know, going back to, you know, going back sometimes, if I do have time, I will go back and I'll, I'll, I'll finish it. You know, I'll keep reading through Mark 14, 15, you know, or Matthew, wherever I'm at, whichever gospel we've chosen. It's usually whatever gospel they finish is the one I choose um, to bring them back. And, um, and uh, so when we get to that point of, my God, my God, why have you forsaken mm -hmm. me? Mm -hmm. You know, sounds like the cry of a sinner. Mm -hmm. This perfect, mm -hmm. innocent God, our Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. the cry of a sinner. Abandoned, forsaken, abandoned. Mm -hmm. You know, I remind him of Isaiah 59. The defilement of sin, something that, that is so disgusting and horrific that it separates us from the Father now. In his one and only son. Mm. You know, back in Isaiah, if you, what were we were just reading, you know, the passion, the movie The Passion, I think, does a great job with some of the physical suffering and even some of the emotional suffering. You know, as sure. moms, we can sometimes relate to the mother, yeah. you know, and see, like, yeah. okay, we can see her and we can relate more to that, but then we think about the father. Mm. He planned it, you know, and mm. it says it was mm -hmm. his will wow. to mm. crush wow. out of love for us. Yeah. The yeah. intensity yeah. of that yeah. love is my. But then that, that, you know, I probably compartmentalize too much with the physical, the emotional, but then there's a suffering of his soul, yeah. that defilement with our sin in his body. And realizing that no sin is free. No sin is free. And, you know, yeah. you talk about either I'm going to pay for that sin or Jesus. There's no other yeah. way. Mm -hmm. There's point. no yeah. other way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for me to be right with God, mm -hmm. then Jesus pays for it. You know, when I'm tempted to sin even now. I have to remind myself, you know, that deliberate sin, like, okay, I know if I open my mouth, now it's not going to be good. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Okay, that's only adding sin to the sin that's already in my heart. Yeah. yeah. Let me go deal with the sin of my heart so they can deal with the words that will come yeah. out. Yeah. But I thought, because it's not going to be free. Yeah. 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 Jesus, unless yeah. Jesus bears that sin in that tree, I cannot be saved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? It's not free. Mm -hmm. And for people to understand, that's what gets the sorrow. Is that connection knowing that our sin, that Jesus bears our sins in his body so that we can have that atonement. Mm -hmm. Something that God has always had. He had this way, a way for us to be at one with him because that's his heart's desire. Mm -hmm. Us, completely unholy, unperfect, impure, mm -hmm. at one, perfect unity with God. Mm -hmm. Reconciliation, mm -hmm. atonement. It's it's mind-boggling. I thought, why does God love us that much? We don't understand because we don't love each other that much. Yeah. 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 But we just got to accept it yeah. Yeah. and yeah. fight to get there. Yeah. You know, in the rest of our lives, you know, um, sometimes even, even before, I was told I had to be done in four minutes, okay. Um, but, on, but this is, I think, on. you know, even when <laughs> we were talking great. about the beginning, I do, when you talk about the shedding of blood, mm -hmm. um, and I, I actually do a lot of times turn to Hebrews 9, mm -hmm. when it talks about without the shedding of blood, yeah. there right. is no forgiveness. That's a great one. And that, you know, in the Old Testament, yeah, the, the blood, and I thought, but the, the once for all that we see in 2 Corinthians 5, like Jesus died once for all, it's mm -hmm. kind of like, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. You know, um, as as 
uh, someone was talking about, I think, in the communion message about um, 1 John, um, 1 John chapter 1, yeah. talking mm-hmm. about, you know, how the, the blood purifies us, that we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus purifies us. Um, and it is this ongoing purification, you know, like, okay, I know I just sinned, but I know that I'm also in a perfect relationship with God because of Jesus' blood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Perfect. You know, setting that picture up, yeah. you know, and, and I think we are in the post, you know, I do study different with young teens versus mm-hmm. more mature women and, and everything in between. I study the Bible with every, anybody from 12 to 82, mm-hmm. um, but but I think, you know, we have to find out where people are at, and I think mm-hmm. the, in this postmodern age, we, we connect to stories more than anything else. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not this logic reason, although there are people out there, you have to find out, you got to meet them there. That's mm-hmm. the one when you study through Romans and, and Hebrews and... and but the stories, you know, to get them to connect. And, and also, it's, it's not, you know, I tell people, you have life experiences and you have suffering. And I tell them, even the beginning of the cross, you have gone through these. Do not waste your suffering. Mm-hmm. You know, use what God has allowed you yeah. to go through to connect to him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, everything you've got. You might not think, oh, it's no big deal that you broke up with your boyfriend had an interest in that. But if that was suffering for you, use it. Okay. <laughs> you know, because it was pain. Mm-hmm. And use it to connect mm-hmm. because we can't connect to the cross unless we connect to his suffering. Mm-hmm. And, and not to waste, you know, anything that we've gone through. The humiliation, mm-hmm. the pain, mm-hmm. you know, even going in. The, before the Garden of Gethsemane, I'll often talk about, like, you know, after we've read through that. And I thought, what? What do you mean overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death? Mm-hmm. What was that for you? Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times it's not, it's just grieving, you know? Mm-hmm. Losing somebody that you love and you know you'll never see their face again. Mm-hmm. You know, remember it, sitting in my shower, like feeling I cannot breathe on the floor, you know, just gasping for air. You know, bring them somewhere where they can start connecting, mm-hmm. you know, so that they can connect. And God has allowed... And, God has gotten that person sitting in front of you at that point in time. It is the right time, Mm -hmm. you know, and whatever it is, you know, it doesn't matter. Teen, old, you know, they have something, and God has got them prepared Mm -hmm. for this time. And as ministers of the word, if we can just help them understand the intensity of sin, Mm -hmm. you know. I appreciate the message this morning. So what a great Christmas Mm -hmm. message, you know. And we talk about this evil in, 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 you know, around the world. We see it. But what about my disrespect, my pride, my goodness? Let's yeah. not, it's easy to say that's evil, but then to even go to another yeah. level, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. the impurity yeah. um, that Bill brought up even this morning. Like th- those things, like that is evil. To yeah. rely on it right. and getting us to that point so that they can be like, oh my gosh, what do I do? You know? Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. often I do, and people laugh at me. Sometimes I do what they call a marathon study. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I do the cross. Ed laughs. Yeah, I, <laughs> it is. I do because at this point, they're like, Oh my gosh, what do we do? You know, so yes. I, I do cross repentance and baptism Come and on. church all in one because they're already there. Yeah. 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 And this is the motivation. They're, they're oh, there. Yeah. There's no reason to keep, like, okay, let's get together in a couple of days or let, let me let you process that. If they're there, just go for it. You're right. There's no Come reason. On. I said, sin, repentance, and baptism one night and got baptized. I did my first uh, church and baptism study, the one I led. You know, I'm like, how do you do that? Okay, I'll do that. You know, it's what you do on mission team. Like that. <laughs> you know? um, I was baptized into a mission team. I was invited before the first service. At wow. 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 Um, but, uh, but I think, you know, um, again, the intensity of sin, the, the love that God has for us, let it be the motive through grace uh, that we get our secrets to. Amen. Amen. Amen.